This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association for MTK Global. We're in Saudi Arabia, a couple of days out away from Ruiz Joshua too. Now, I must admit, I didn't think uh, I'd be interviewing you out here in Saudi Arabia. Um, just talk to me about the honour it is to be on this bill, biggest fight of the year. And did you think you'd be having your second pro fight uh, in Saudi? Uh, definitely not in Saudi. Um, to be honest with you, I thought it'd be somewhere like York Hall, which I was scheduled to boxing on the, on the 19th. But... Um, Two weeks ago, I got a call off Eddie. Well, Dave did, and um, yeah, he said you box, do you fancy boxing in Saudi? And I said, of course. It's the, it's the biggest show in the past couple of years, and it's an honour for me to be on it, really. What was your like initial reaction? Were you like, obviously, I'm guessing there was a bit of a shock in there, but like a couple of minutes after, you must have been just delighted and buzzing. I thought it was joking at first. Really? I, was, I was warming up, I was training, and um, I was just carrying on shadow boxing. I said, ah, Dave, I said, you're having me on. And he said, um, no, I'm not, I'm not. And even even though I sort of knew I was, I, st I still thought, no, no, I'm not. Until he actually he, um, he WhatsApp me, he said, um, send me your passport across. He said, so we can we can book the flights. But uh, yeah, I was over the moon when he talked when I found out I was actually coming over. Talk to me a little bit about your amateur career uh, in terms of the youth with the Olympics and uh, any European competitions uh, you entered. Like, uh, yeah, just list me your achievements. Well, I won seven national titles from the age of 14 to 19, and I won two European golds, one European silver, a world silver and I was the first British boxer to win Youth Olympic gold. So <laughs> That's some list there and uh, yeah, well remembered. Uh, second professional fight, yeah as I said it's a, it's a massive experience here but it's just at the end of the day a fight and uh, you've got to carry on uh, doing your thing in the ring, uh, you can't really let the occasion get to you. Uh, I'm su suppose you're taking it all in but when fight night comes it's just down to business and I hope it. Yeah, like you say, um, you just look at some of the fighters who's around, around the hotel with us and already been world champions, Olympic gold medalists and already boxed and headlining shows yourself. And like you say, while you're around it, you've got to enjoy it and obviously soak it all up. But when Saturday night comes and I enter that, um, well, it's an outdoor arena and the switch just turns on and concentrate on, on the fight, uh, rings a ring to me at the end of the day. Has uh, Anthony or Dylan White or any of the other Brits kind of uh, said anything to you out here? Like a good luck message or anything like that? Uh, I've seen them come down and said all right and that, but I haven't really sat down and had a conversation with any of them. I'm sure if there was time, I'm sure they would sit down. I said they all seem like nice guys, so I'm sure they all would. What's uh, your ambitions in this sport? Obviously, you've just reeled off your amateur achievements and second to none they are, so I'm sure your ambitions for the pro ranks are to get to the right to the top of the sport and uh, win world titles and unify. I know that's a long way away, but considering your amateur record, uh, that's surely what you're aiming for in the pro ranks. Yeah, definitely. When I started off, like, say, amateur, I wanted to be the best amateur boxer in the world. And for two years, I was from, like, 18 to 19, I was world number one as an amateur. So as a professional, I only want to be the same. Um, I know I've got to take my time and I'm only young, but I think that that's a good thing. I think I can end up a world champion, but I don't just want to be, like, a one-division champion. I'd like to win a couple of belts and maybe be undisputed champion. Uh, not many people have done that from Britain and I'd like to do so. Absolutely massive for your weight as well, so I'm sure you all have to move up in a weight class one day. Yeah, I'll definitely have to move up one day, but um, like you say, yeah, I'm massive, so it won't really matter to me if I moved up a couple of weights. I've got, I've got the hype and I'm only young, so my body's going to keep on developing, so I reckon in a couple of years' time I'll, I'll soon be going through the weights. How long have you been with uh, Dave Coldwell for? Um, uh, since about June, so not long since the summer. So really, I was I was going to stay on for the Tokyo Games yeah. for the Olympics, but um, I, after I won like the Youth Olympics and that, I thought to myself, I've medalled in every competition as an amateur. So we got in touch with Dave and went down the gym and been training then ever since. Hope I do want to get your thoughts on uh, the main event this Saturday night between Ruiz and Joshua. I'm guessing you're back in the Brit. Um, but taking that aside, do you think uh, it's repeat or revenge this Saturday night? Um, I think it's revenge. Really? Yeah, I think um, last time, I think Joshua, with Ruiz coming in late notice, I think he never had no pressure on him. I think everyone just expected him, I was going to blow him away. But I think this time he knows from what happened last time that he can't let that happen again. And Ruiz is a big, big threat. Like you say, you've seen him at the workout, he's a tremendous fighter and he's got tremendous speed for heavyweight. So I think this time, I think Joshua's probably gone back and changed a few things. I think this time he'll box a bit more to orders 
and honestly I can probably see him putting I can see him putting Ruiz away. Okay. Alright, well Hopi Price, uh, it's a massive occasion out here but I'm sure when it gets to Saturday night you're going to put that to bed and uh, it's just business as usual. Um, and then afterwards I'm sure you can kind of soak it all in and uh, one to tell uh, the grandkids about one day, boxing on this bill. Yeah, definitely, like you say, I'm just at the minute, I'm just soaking it all up and concentrating on Saturday night but once it's over I'm sure I can look back and say, look, there was a rumble in the jungle, now there was this and, and I was a part of it, so... All right, Hobie Price, thank you very much for your time on IFL. I'm sure you'll be topping massive bills one day yourself. Um, and uh, we'll catch a word after your fight, no doubt, all right? Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Hobie. Thank you, mate.